Hello, everyone. I'm addressing you again today. And again, I want to say it is my privilege and pleasure uh, to talk with you on, on Thursday and to give you some insights of my week and what I'm feeling and thinking. And today, I'm going to continue with the thought of being uncomfortable, uh, how the church is to feel some uncomfortableness. And I want to take us back to the greatest events uh, of this season. There's two events, of course. The resurrection, which I talk about freely. I love the resurrection Sunday uh, that we're about to in encounter. And I'm looking forward to us celebrating the resurrection of Christ altogether. Uh, but prior to that, there was another event that took place. And that is the event that I want us to talk about as in the sense that it is very uncomfortable to talk about it. And so I will read a verse because Paul felt the same way. In 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, Verses uh, beginning with 18, the message of the cross is foolishness or is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. As the scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look very foolish. I will show you how that works in a moment. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven. It is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. Dwayne is now going to sing a very, very favorite tune for the gospel, one that we do not hear very much. And there's a reason that it has sort of been cut out of our Christian culture and it is to our dismay. Dwayne. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross to my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Isn't that a powerful song? Why don't we hear more of that? Well, I'm going to share some of that with you. Spurgeon said, hide not the offense of the cross unless you make it of none effect. Toning down is not the increase of strength, but is the death of it. Important, important. So the comfortable church wants to tone down the cross and the effect of the cross, wants to tone down the suffering of the, when Jesus said, follow me, meaning follow me because if you follow me, there will be dying involved. And that's the uncomfortable part of the cross that we like to just cast aside and act like it doesn't exist. The Christian faith is all about the event of the cross. It is all about the event of the cross. It is about the event of the old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. In other words, the representation, what it means of the suffering and shame that our Savior did on our behalf and for us. It is so despised by the world. The cross is so despised by the world. How, how many uh, ordinances have been passed in the last 20 years and says you can't have a cross uh, 
uh, but just so big, or you can't put it in certain places and because it is despised by the world, just like Paul writes in Corinthians, the first chapter that I just read to you. But it has a wondrous attraction for me. While it is despised by others, for the believer, it has a wondrous attraction. It brings out the best in me. It brought out the worst in me in that it, it forgave me of my, of my sins, and now it brings out the best of me in that I am grateful and appreciative to what the cross represents in my life. Everything uncomfortable about Christianity begins with and returns to the cross. The cross experience and the cross, uh, the discussion of the cross is a bit uncomfortable. Some churches, some gatherings of fellowship groups under the banner of Christianity find it even difficult to discuss the sufferings of the cross. In the ancient world, for example, a cross was not something attractive like you have today. We hang crosses around our neck and, and we put a little diamond in it to decorate it, make it better. And, and that's all, that, that symbolism is, is fine. But you understand the original version, the original where it all came from, the cross was not attractive. It was uncomfortable to the Jews because it was foolishness. It was uncomfortable to the Gentiles. They didn't understand it. To them, it was the worst kind of death. Our king of kings, the man who everybody said he is the Lord of lords, the one that just came in as a triumphant king, was nailed to a cross. The most disgusting, the most horrendous type of death that you could do in that day. It was for the vilest of sinners. And yet our king of kings came and died on the cross representing all that that means to us today. So we want to make it pretty. We want to make it decorative. We want to talk about uh, we want to talk about the beauty of the cross. We have tattoos on our bodies of, of the cross. Friends, you can't diamond stud the sufferings of Jesus Christ. They were real, real sufferings. And that's the uncomfortableness in the Christian church. We're trying to, we're trying to cut out all the, all the pain and all the suffering, not realizing that that's what brings victory and glory. That's, the trial is what brings out of my person the character of Christ. Without a trial, I'm, I, without trials, and there will be no triumph. But we just want the triumph, and we preach and teach the triumph. The uncomfortable church is coming back into existence. We have given it away for the comfortable, for what feels good. Okay, so in reality, it was a barbaric method, uh, a method of death, and 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 just uh, uh, oh, just think about it. And yet, he was the King of Kings, our King of Kings, and he chose to die because in that death. He forgave us of our sins. He paid the penalty for our sins. While it may be embarrassing, while it may be embarrassing to some, to others, it is the flea of victory. For example, the, one of the big differences between the Islam religion, Islam and, and uh, Christianity is, is the death of the cross. They, a great prophet of God could not possibly die on the cross in that manner. And so they push away Christianity because they push away the discomfortness of the, the discomfortableness of the cross. Think about that. And, and when, those, uh, uh, when those 15, I think it was 15, was uh, beheaded back in, in, in 2015, uh, when they were beheaded, they had the name of them, the people of the cross. Well, friends, I want you to know something. The people of the cross began with the Lord Jesus Christ, began with God himself hanging on the cross. So do not, do not feel uncomfortable about the cross. Praise God for that and realize what it really means. As I, as I look at these verses, I see that, the, that there's several things that the following the cross will be. When Jesus said, follow me, follow me, here's what he says, the loss of being your own boss deny yourself. When he says deny yourself and take up his cross, here's what he says. He says the loss of being your own boss. You know what, you know what modern day, modern day Christianity is like? Jesus is, is, is not really in charge of my life. I'm in charge of my life and he's going to bless me while I run my life. But here's the, here's the discomfortness in Christianity that we need to get back to. We must get back to in this, this Jesus you are Lord and I am not. 
You are the Lord of my life and I am not. And so the first discomfortable thing we have to uh, face is, man, oh Lord, help me. Help me deny myself so that I will not be or choose to be my own boss. I don't want to be in charge of my own life. And it's, so it's about surrender. And that's what our Lord and Savior did on the cross. He surrendered his life that we might have life. He paid the penalty of sin through, through, the, through the shedding of blood that we might be forgiven. Oh, praise God. And so we today, we want to follow the cross. We want to follow Jesus, but we want to hang on to our life. We want to do, we want everything to be comfortable and become ours and, and, and uh, uh, so much more that I'll say about this later on, but I'll, I want to keep this in a certain uh, time slot. And my friend, it's exciting. It's exciting to know that we're getting back to the real uncomfortableness of our faith. And that is, let the world say what they want. But we know that it took a blood sacrifice to redeem our sins. It took God himself because he's the only one that can be perfect. And he did so. We know that and we accept that and we praise God. And he says, now, if you're going to lose your, if you're going to follow me, you got to lose yourself. You got to lose yourself. You got to say, I'm not my own boss. I'm not in control of my life. He's in control of my life. And because of who he is, I am now very comfortable because he's in control of my life. Oh my, we can only be comfortable if we rest in Christ. You understand? So when I think about, uh, uh, in conclusion here, when I think about Adam and Eve, what, what was the problem they had? They wanted to be in control of their own life. God gave, the creator was in control of their life and gave them everything. And all of a sudden they said, wait a minute, I think I can do a better job. Well, you know where that went for us. And so you, if you think you can do a better job, you're going to live your life in misery. You're going to live your life in disappointment. But I want you to know the Christian faith is this. We wake up every morning. I just spoke with a, uh, an elderly lady early this morning, and she says, Pastor, I wake up every morning knowing that God is on my side and he's leading me through my day. That's where the comfort is. The uncomfortableness is when I resist him and when I fight against Surrendering my will to him, to his. Jesus, you are Lord and I am not. And that's the most uncomfortable statement that we can make. It is uncomfortable following Christ. But praise God for our uncomfortableness. Amen. Praise God that I'm uncomfortable enough that I can say, Jesus, you are the Lord. And thank God I am not. And that I am not means that I have surrendered. And that's a struggle for all of us to surrender, uh, to get the flesh out of our life and just let Jesus control us. But that's the beauty of the cross. That's the beauty of the cross and what it means to us in our lives. Father, I ask you this morning, I ask you this day to bless, bless your family today. Bless the family of God. Help us, Lord, not to search for, for what is comfortable, for what is popular and exciting, but help us, Lord, to search for that great, suffering of the cross in the suffering I mean that we would be willing to die that we would lay ourselves aside and take on the new life of Jesus Christ the character of Christ in us father there's nothing good in us the scripture teaches nothing good in us but everything is good in Christ and so you want us to take in your character oh praise your name thank you for the cross and what it means to us thank you Lord and I call your church I call us Lord to be more uncomfortable with just the status quo, but help us insist, help us, oh Lord, empower us to insist on following our Lord and Savior and allowing you to be the Lord in our lives, in Jesus' name. Be blessed, my friend, and this Resurrection Sunday coming up is a Sunday of victory, the most victorious day, oh hallelujah, of our, of our Christian faith. So let us get ready to celebrate. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you.